today we are putting fish in jars in pressure cans. All right, so if you've never actually pressure canned anything before, then I recommend checking out this video here on how to use a weighted gauge pressure canner, and this one on how to use a dial gauge pressure canner, depending on the type that you have. And when you're confident that you know how to use the thing, then you can come back here and we're gonna can fish. Today, we're gonna can Chinook salmon and albacore tuna, both provided by our friends at Community Supported Fishery in Garibaldi, Oregon. Now, in this case, these fish are coming right off of a commercial dock, but the process and the timing that we use today can be used for pretty much any fish. So canning fish really is super easy. It really is one of the easiest things you can can. The ingredients at its simplest are fish, and that's it. In this case, we're gonna do fish and a little bit of salt. Just remember to always use a tested recipe from a trusted source and always follow the timing exactly. And a quick reminder, whenever you're canning seafood or meat or anything like that, then you need to use a pressure canner. You cannot use a water bath canner. It just doesn't get hot enough to kill any potentially harmful organisms that might be in there. So let's get this boat launched and start canning. First, we're going to start by setting up our pressure canner checking to make sure that everything is clean and ready to go. And then we're gonna get our jars and lids ready, making sure that they are also clean, they have no nicks or scratches or scrapes or bruises of any kind. You do not need to heat up the jars in this case. Today I'm starting with a salmon filet and a tuna loin that have already been cleared of all the viscera and the head and all that stuff. So first, of course, you get rid of anything that's not edible. However, the skin and the bones can stay on. Believe it or not, the bones are gonna basically dissolve in this process and you can just eat them. You won't even notice that they're there. Same thing with the skin. It's actually really pretty if you leave it on and it saves you a step if you leave it there. So we take our clean fish and depending if we're using pints or half pints, we need to measure out sections of the fish that are gonna fit into these jars. Measure out your cut, cut it, and then stick that piece into the jar. You may find that once it's curled up in there, there's room for another piece of the same size. Since I'm gonna be canning both pints and half pints, then I need a variety of different cuts. We pack the fish pretty tight into each jar, always leaving an inch of headspace. At this point, if desired, this is optional, you can add a teaspoon of salt. I recommend it because I think the flavor is better and the salt really gets in there with the fish. And we wipe down the rims of each jar with a clean wet paper towel to make sure we get any gunk that might prevent sealing. We add a lid, we put a band on and adjust it just to fingertip tightness. And that is all that goes in the jar. It's really that easy. All right, now we place our jars on our canning rack inside the canner with three quarts of water below the jars. Remember, we are not submerging the jars underwater. We're going to be steaming them from below under pressure. Then we'll place the lid on our canner, lining up the arrow on the handle with the arrow on the canner. We make sure it's centered on a burner and turn the thing on. Now the pressure regulator at this point is not yet on the vent pipe on the top of the canner. We need to let steam start coming out of that hole. So once it does, a steady stream of steam, start a timer for 10 minutes. Let it vent. This gets rid of all of the air inside and replaces it with steam. Meanwhile, we'll get the pressure regulator ready with one weight on it that comes with two. If we add one weight, that's gonna take us up to 10 pounds per square inch pressure. After those 10 minutes of venting have passed, we can then take the regulator and put it on top of the vent pipe. Then we can start adjusting the heat a bit and waiting for that regulator to start to rock. As soon as there's a consistent, gentle rocking, it may start pretty fast, then you can turn the heat pretty low and get it to a point where it continues to rock constantly and not too rapidly. And now that it's consistently rocking, we start the timer for the amount of time indicated on the recipe. We are following the USDA guidelines for processing the fish for 100 minutes. Yeah, it's a long time. It's an hour and 40 minutes. It's enough time to read a book, read the paper, watch a movie, do stuff on the internet, whatever it is you do. But you need to make sure that you stay nearby. You can hear and see the regulator rocking. Keep it going for the entire length of time. If the regulator stops rocking at any point, you need to come back, get it going again, and restart your timer for another 100 minutes. That's important. Now get comfy and catch up on some reading. All right, so it's been 100 minutes. The processing time is over, so now you can turn the burner off. Let the canner sit. Don't mess with it. It's really, really, really hot in there. Just leave it alone for a little while. Eventually, the cover locking pin in the handle is gonna drop down. That is an indication that there is no more pressure in the canner. Now you can safely, carefully, remove the regulator from the top 
Now let it sit for another few minutes just so the temperature and the pressure can fully equalize with the outside world. Now you can open up the lid, tip it so the steam goes away from you, and we can safely use a jar lifter to remove our jars and set them on a towel. Now be careful and don't mess with them. They are really hot and still boiling inside those jars. Now they're not gonna create a full safe vacuum seal until they have fully cooled down to room temperature. So leave them be until tomorrow. Once they're completely cooled to the touch, remove the rings, label and date them and throw them on a shelf or give them away to your friends. Now that you got all this salmon and tuna in your pantry, you can use it for all kinds of things. You can make salad, you can make omelets, you can add it to chowder. If it's been a long day, you could just pop it open and eat it. Whatever floats your boat. That is it for now, folks. There are more videos from Graniteware on how to use their canners, cookers, and steamers, and other products, and then more recipes on canning and food preservation over on the Mason Jars Suite. Leave us a comment. Let us know if you have any questions. We will do our best to answer them. And here's to happy fishing.